This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. Well, here we are. We're talking about Clifford the Big Red Dog. Because of course we are. Of course there's a movie about the Big Red Dog, and of course it's live action, of course Clifford looks terrible, and of course I'm gonna talk about it. This movie just seems like it fits so snug into this series of mine where I watch movies so you don't have to. Because yeah, on the surface, this movie looks kind of intriguing. Who doesn't know the Big Red Dog? I read the books, I'm well read, and who wouldn't want to see him prance around the big red apple, but you're also probably like, eh, there's better ways to spend my afternoon. And guys, that's what I'm here for. I did watch the movie, this is how I spent my afternoon, and I'm here to review it, and recap it, and just get into why this is a bad movie. If you don't know about Clifford, he's pretty much the mascot for Scholastic. He's a big red dog who gets himself into shenanigans and all the kids love him. I loved Clifford. Do I remember a single Clifford book? Absolutely not. I do remember Go Dog Go, why hasn't there been a movie about that? But I don't remember Clifford, that doesn't mean I don't like Clifford, I have nothing against the fella, but so they made a movie about him. It's about a girl named Elizabeth, I don't remember her name, it's probably Elizabeth, and she's being looked after by her uncle, played by a guy who really wishes he was Ashton Kutcher. This happens because her mom is going out of town, now her mom is British, she is not British, I do not remember this being explained, but it's a super random detail that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and Elizabeth is kind of a loser. She goes to school with a big bag full of cans, she spills the cans, shit goes viral, you know the drill. There's a girl who absolutely obliterates her social status in class when she goes, uh, clean up on aisle four. Guys, things are not going well for Elizabeth. And what happens is she goes to the park. She goes into this tent where a bunch of other weird animals are, and she finds this little red puppy. Old man work in the tent named Mr. Bridwell <coughs> is all like, he grows the more you love him. So naturally, she takes the dog home, and she wakes up, and she's like, what the heck? And ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, because it's about to be chaos. Now, right off the bat, and I think a lot of you would see this coming, but Clifford looks bad in this movie. Like, just the design, which is simple. It's that of a normal puppy. There's something about it that lacks any sort of character, which is an issue because if the titular big red dog is not charming and instead just comes across like a big asshole, literally, who gets in the way and causes trouble, why would anyone care? Because the appeal of Clifford for me, for me, is those big ol' eyes with the cute smile and this dog, no offense, he doesn't have any of those chops. I really wish they went the Captain Underpants route and just went 3D with it, you know? Now I have to acknowledge there is another Clifford movie movie from 2004 that is animated. It doesn't look a whole lot better than this, but Clifford certainly does. I'm not gonna watch that movie, because that's not what this video is about! But anyways, this choice to make him a real puppy boils down to the fact that this takes place in New York City, and how the dog needs to look real to get these real people reactions, you know? Which, a quick sidetrack, let's talk about Tom and Jerry, another movie that came out this year that took a beloved children's character and threw them in a live-action setting in New York City. There's nothing wrong with New York City itself, but it just feels like an extremely lazy way to keep a plot interesting without having to do any of the heavy lifting. Not that this is THE New York City film, but ever since the success of something like Elf, every family-friendly movie acts like it needs to be in the city because there's nothing funnier than a big city getting a little wacky. But anyway, Clifford quickly gets a little out of hand because he's a big-ass dog. Of course he's gonna get out of hand. He ends up chasing a guy who's in one of those hamster ball things in the park, and it doesn't take long for, you guessed it, an evil scientist CEO guy to get involved, where he's like, we need Clifford for testing reasons or something, it doesn't really matter. Again, I really hate when these family movies use evil scientists or something as a cop-out, because it's like, yes, even though Clifford is the reason for this happening, it really takes a lot of the attention away from Clifford, the only interesting thing about the story, and we end up spending way more time with Tony Hale and that one guy from SNL. It's just like, Norman Bridwell wrote like 80 books about this dog, I feel like there were other options for conflict in this movie that would feel like a proper adaptation anyway. The Clifford community is not gonna be happy about this. A good chunk of this film, the middle chunk to be exact, is spent just kind of messing around because obviously this is not the kind of story that can support a feature length film. They take him to the doctor, he breaks the scale. They take him to the park, he takes a piss on a giant tree, which of course prompts the inevitable don't want to be around for the number two joke. Writing this video makes me think back to my video about Dr. Seuss movies and how most, keyword most, don't work all that well because children's books serve a completely different purpose than children's movies, and Clifford the Big Red Dog, one of the simplest and clearly most most forgettable children
Bojan's characters makes no sense as a movie. He isn't meant to be this slapstick character where it's kind of funny. The appeal of the books was that he was charming and kind of cute, just a lovable guy that doesn't know much about the world around him, so you, as a child, learn with him. Not something that you can use to tell the story of another, like, evil CEO. Then all of a sudden they get evicted, because of course, and it's because of Clifford after the whole hamster ball thing broke, which really sucks. At that point I would definitely say, no offense, maybe we should not keep this dog if he's causing this much trouble. But then Clifford saves a guy, but then the CEO comes in and they're on the run. So they hide at this kid's place, who, let me just say, is one of the worst child actors. He annoys me pretty much every second he's on screen. The boy talks like he's an unsuccessful comedian living in LA or something, not like a child. There's a really funny moment in here where the uncle looks out the window and sees two NYPD cop cars and is like, those are probably for us. Like, oh yeah? In New York City, you think those two cop cars are for you guys? But he's all like, if we can find the old man, we can keep the dog. Otherwise, the dog is going on a boat. They go to the hospital, the old man is supposedly dead. Bada bing, bada boom, Cliff is sailed away. But then he's hijacked. <gasps> and the old man isn't dead. <gasps> so there's a whole scene where they break into this company and steal him back. There's a chase scene where she rides Clifford through the city, the moment we've all been waiting for. And when I tell you this is some of the worst CGI I've ever seen. I mean it. There's one shot from above where the scale of her body and the world around her is so off, it's hilarious. I know nobody is going to go see this movie expecting Star Wars or something, but it's just funny because like, <laughs> That's not how a person is supposed to look. She finds the old man, delivers one of the most vague and uninspiring speeches to a crowd full of police and strangers who somehow give in, and then they keep the dog and whatever. You're probably thinking, hey man, this sounds like just a normal ass, harmless ass kids movie. To which I say, sure, yeah. This is, at the end of the day, obviously, a movie for kids. And to cite Clara Curtis on Letterboxd, just because it's a type of fun you've outgrown or can't connect to doesn't inherently make it a terrible movie. And hey, I agree with all of that. But I'm also like, this is one of the laziest executions I've ever seen. I said it once and I'll say it again. The excuse of it's a kid's movie doesn't excuse a film from doing nothing remotely interesting with an already charming character. Once again, the Clifford community is going to be furious about this. Anyway, that's Clifford. You don't have to watch it and form your own opinion because I already did. Then my opinion is yours. That's how it works around here. I'm just kidding. Thanks for watching and before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now Squarespace, if you didn't already know, is a place where you can go to build your brand, whether that be an online store, a blog, a portfolio, portfolio, you name it. They have a wide array of award-winning designer templates that'll make whatever that website is look amazing. It'll definitely look better than my mustache. And they have 24-hour customer service to walk you through any issues you happen to run into. The best part about it all, though, is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you get 10% off of your first purchase. Guys, there's really no reason not to give it a shot. I wish I could talk more about it, but I gotta go shave this mustache. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out Squarespace, and I'll see you all in the next one.